Okay, uh, welcome to uh, the eBay Success webinar. This uh, this is something I've been wanting to create for some time, just to kind of set expectations and and go through and, and really give a visual of what it really takes to be successful on eBay. Uh, it's a great platform. There's there's a great uh, potential there with eBay. Um, definitely a, a, a lot of people are making good money on eBay, but there are a lot of people complaining about eBay in, in the process over the years too, and there are many more. Just like anything in life, there are a whole lot more people who quote unquote try and don't succeed than there are who do succeed. And really what it comes down to is our expectations versus the, the work we, we actually put in. That, that's really what it comes down to is what I've found. Um, a lot of times we have these expectations of you know owning our own business, how glori glori glorious it could be and how great you know I can hardly work at all and, and uh, make money. Well I, I think uh, closer to the truth is the old, uh, well the new phrase that I've seen uh, relatively recently a lot, um, lately anyway on social media, uh, that goes something like this, entrepreneurs, the only people who will work 60 hours a week to avoid working 40. <laughs> and that feels closer to the truth, that you've got to put in a lot of hard work, sometimes for a long time, and that long time could be months, it could be years, depending on the, um, the industry and, and how you're, you're really working. You've got to put in a lot of hard work before you start seeing the fruits of your labor and the results. So hopefully what I'm going to do with this webinar is kind of talk about some of the basics of what it takes to sell, to sell online in general and set your expectations properly so you're really running this like a business. And as we go through this, I'll share some examples you know, actually show you some big sellers on eBay so you can see what they're doing that makes them the power sellers that they are. Okay. All right. So first thing to look at is our expectations versus the work that we put in. And we have to kind of, uh, we have to set some goals. We have to set some, uh, some expectations. We have to know what we're, what we're looking at. So first, what do we want to achieve? Do we want a little extra money? Do we want to replace an income? Do we want to retire in style? Or do we want a big house and a fast car? <clears throat> so of course, that's our, our expectation side of things, the, the expectation side of goals. We need some goals that relate to what is it we really want to do with our business. And so we're going to fall somewhere in between this first bullet point and this last one or, or one of these. Somewhere in there, is your expectations what you want out of this business. But then we have to look at the other side of it, which is the work. Okay, so don't forget that great results require great sacrifice and extreme effort. If we want to have a huge house and a fast car, and right now we're living in a one-bedroom apartment, well, then we're certainly going to have to change some things, right? <laughs> we're not going to go from that one-bedroom apartment to the big house just with little effort. It's going to have to, it's going to be great sacrifice and extreme effort. Um, the more we want or the more we want to change, the more that's going to be required. So the one thing I can promise you is success doesn't come easy. <laughs> it's going to take uh, some hard work. All right, so let's look at some basics of, uh, you know, sales model basics. What, what does it take to sell a product? So we have the, um, the basic product, on the manufacturer's end, the product is created, and over on the other extreme, we have the customer who buys it, who wants the product. So we have the, the maker, and we have the buyer. And then in between, we have this chain of this retail chain or this sales model. The manufacturer creates the product. We have importers or warehouses who stock the product. We have distributors. Some of this is intermingled. It might be a, a warehouse that distributes the product. Um, or we have other distributors who will get it from the warehouses, warehouse it themselves, and distribute it for others. That's where dropship comes in. Then we have the retailer, and then we have the consumer, the customer. Okay. So everybody in this chain here has to make money. 
if they're going to stay in business and this is going to keep working, they have to, everybody has to make money. And so the manufacturer has to make a profit margin. Uh, the importer uh, and warehouser has to make a, a profit. The distributor or drop shipper has to make a profit. The retailer has to make a profit. The only one that doesn't is the consumer. And yet the consumer is the one who wants to get everything free. Right? And uh, oftentimes uh, when talking to consumers, who have no clue what it really takes to manufacture, design, and create a product, these consumers will look at the raw materials and think, uh, well, if, you know, my Viper sharp, knife sharpener, for example, the, you know, if we take that as a, as a sample product, in fact, let's, uh, let's just throw that up on the screen here for you as a, a visual. So somebody might look at uh, my product, the uh, the Viper Sharp um, tool that I created, and think only about the cost of materials. And they'll say, I've even had people say this. You know, they'll look at this and say, Well, I could put that together in my garage for less than 50 bucks. Um, well, not unless they had some very specialized skills. Um, they can't. But uh, even the materials alone uh, have a cost involved there, and that's not to mention all of my labor in putting it all together, designing it, coming up with the idea, you know, all of that, uh, the years of work that come into it. So if you want the raw materials, great. I'll send you a chunk of aluminum, a piece of, uh, of plastic, uh, and uh, some raw stone materials and you can try and figure out how to make everything that's so you you know consumers that have that attitude of hey it shouldn't cost me any more than it costs the manufacturer well something like that would literally break the uh the manufacturing process it, it, it can't work so we have to understand that everybody in this process has to make a profit and so as a retailer if we want to to build a business as a retailer and pre present a product to a consumer, we want to make a profit, but we also have to realize everybody else in front of us has got to make a profit. The closer we can get to this side of the model, the more profit potential we have, the bigger our ROI. So that's why I've got these arrows here. On this side, manufacturer, higher ROI. If I'm manufacturing my own product like I am with the Viper Sharp and selling it direct to the public, then of course I'm going to have the highest profit margins. And I have to have those high profit mar margins uh, figured in there because I also deal with warehousers and distributors and retailers who will also sell my product and they have to make a profit. And if I'm going to sell it to them and still make a profit, then I have to have a high enough markup for that to work so that everybody can, can make a profit there. So the closer you get to being a manufacturer, the higher your ROI, return on investment. But it's also going to require higher work. You're going to have to put in a lot more time, a lot more hours, a lot more effort to up front and long term, um, a lot higher work requirements. Closer we get to consumer, the lower our return on investment and the less we have to work. So yeah, if we do a drop ship where we're a drop ship retailer, we're not stocking the product, we're not investing in it up front. Um, it's you know there there may be less work it's moderate i'm not going to say low work there's still some good work that needs to be done but not as much as up here but that also means our return on investment is going to be a little lower or our profit margins i guess it's not really roi because our investment is lower too but our profits are a little bit lower and we might uh, i'm going to change that right here live <laughs> and we'll call that profit margins our what is uh, lower, okay? Um, because we don't have to invest it in as much if we're not investing in it up front, right? But we have to recognize uh, how that works. All right, so what are the sales options? Well, we could be a manufacturer. That's a very advanced option. We create it, we stock it, we sell it, we ship it. We do it all. Um, a stocking distributor. Um, moderate, uh, um, so this advanced means a, a higher level of skill required and understanding and knowledge, you know, higher level of work. Moderate skill, moderate uh, um, level of work required to be a stocking distributor um, with some upfront cost to, to buy it, an investment there. We buy it uh, wholesale or surplus, sell it and ship it. 
um, dropship distributor, um, moderate to, to low um, or no upfront cost, but uh, moderate to low, uh, um, or I'd say moderate at least, uh, you know, work ethic. There's still going to be a lot of work involved there. But we don't have to have the, the risk of buying it, stocking it, and dealing with that. Um, here we sell it, then we buy it, and it is shipped for us. So we don't have to deal with all that. If we look at, so again, we want to look at both sides of this, right? We want the uh, the expectations, expectations versus work. So we've got to see all of that. So um, here we have a little bit of understanding of uh, the, the the pluses of, of the different avenues. Sales option profit, this is where we see our what our expectations should be. Highest potential for profit is if we're manufacturing the product and handling a lot of the work. Um, high potential but mid-range is if we're stocking the product. If we are doing the drop ship model where we are hands off for the most part, then the profit margins are going to be low to moderate. We're not going to have as high possibility or potential of profits. Okay. All right. So next thing we we do then is once we've got an understanding of those things and if needed when you're reviewing this webinar pause it at these different slides to you know or go back and, and review them so you can see what we're talking about with what's required compared to our desires so now that we have an understanding of what's required in those different areas now we look at what were our goals what was it we wanted to achieve did we want that big house and fancy car or do we want just a little extra where do we want to be? Because now we have to match our work goals, and this should change. So goals that match desires, um, I think this should be goals and desires that, that match um, our willingness to work. So again, I'm changing this on the fly. Um, and uh, I'm going to have to move all of it a bit here, but but let's go ahead and do that. So we need, see if I can move it, come on. All right, there we are. So, so this should really read goals that um, that match our willingness to work, basically. So, what we've got to do here is there, there's two types of goals in business. We need our goal of what do we want out of it, but we also need our individual goals of what does it take to get there. What do we need to do to achieve that? And we've got to set those goals of hey, I'm willing to do this much, right? Um, how many listings or products do we want to do? Uh, and this uh, is kind of getting into comparing a mom and pop store versus a Walmart or Amazon. And it comes down to hours required, the time required to put it in. You know, a mom and pop store, and, and even honestly, most of us uh, here, most of you watching this uh, video are, are really looking just to build a small mom and pop business. But what I want you to recognize is that your mom and pop business should be equivalent to or equivalent to Walmart or Amazon in this scenario um where what i'm saying here with the mom and pop is is more of uh, just a hobby kind of thing um if we want to build a legitimate mom and pop business that's going to bring us income and take care of our family and take care of our needs then we've got to put in some serious hours uh, so high return requires high work efforts um getting started here accept the required effort recognize that it's going to require some time and effort and if that means weeks or months before you start seeing a return from your business then accept that recognize that's what it's going to take uh, and then put in realistic work um, the work the time the learning curve consistency and that's probably one of the most important things is consistency be consistent with what you're doing not oh well i put in some hard work for a month I didn't get anything out of it. Well, I'm sorry, but that's not running a business. <laughs> you touched your toe in the water, didn't like the, the temperature, and you gave up. That's all that is. 
consistent hard work going through the learning curve over and over again that's how we achieve great things okay so if you want to see high returns to replacing income, expect it to take some time. So let's go look at some real life examples. Uh, that's where I want to go in and, and look at some uh, uh, examples here on eBay. So I'm going to move this around a little bit for recording. And so I've done a search here for Shiatsu foot massager. You can see that up there, the search results. And I've got 2,686 results for active listings related to those three keywords. And if we come down and start looking at these listings, one of the things we can notice is that oftentimes they're the same thing. So here we have this item right here selling for $109. Here we have two options that we can buy. One's 55, one's 119, so $10 more than that one. Here we have 115 for a similar uh, uh, item or the same thing there. And as we scroll down looking at this list, we can see that same image popping up or other same images popping up over and over. And you'll notice that they are selling for different prices. Now, this is one of the areas that I, I really want you to, to grasp and understand as we uh, go through this, uh, this example here is that, see, here's one, somebody's listing for 140. Now, let's show you this. If we scroll back up toward the top here, over on the left-hand column of uh, our eBay page, we have this list of checkboxes where we can refine our search. And one of the things I like to do is show US only items. So we're looking only at items in the US. So that drops it down to just over 2,000 listings. And then come down to show only sold listings. So we're looking now at sold items. So out of 2,050 or so items that are currently listed, how many have sold? And this is showing within the last three months. So that's a, a little over 50% sell through rate within the three month period. That's not bad. And so the only reason I show you that is so you can set your expectations. Again, remember this video is about setting your expectations. It's not about analyzing everything to death until you can find the perfect product. There is no perfect product. If you research it and you, you're, you're thinking about listing it, list it. Don't put in all that work and spend a half hour researching something and then not list it. That's wasted time. Okay. Sure, we can gain certain, uh, certain things from researching over time. And if we want to research um, lots and lots of products until we can find the best product that we can find with our research, there's something to be said for that, but again, going back to our discussion on time involved, if we're spending most of our time researching, and if we do that for, you know, if we spend a lot of hours researching for the first two or three weeks, then don't expect to be selling anything and making money during that time. Because research doesn't equivalent to, to profits, right? We don't start seeing profits until we're doing some serious listings and sales. And so even though, yes, you're putting in time there, that's R&D, that's research and development. When I built my ViperSharp product, this idea started in the end of, toward the end of 2014, October, November of 2014, I started with this idea. I didn't have a working prototype until late 2015 or early 2016, over a year of research and development, just designing the thing and going through testing to come up with something that would work. And it wasn't until two years later, um, latter part, mid to latter part of 2016, that I finally launched it to the world and started presenting the product, which is actually fairly fast, only a, a year to year and a half uh, to get a product out that was really pushing it, especially where I was working full time still. Um, and here we are, uh, 2017, uh, well, 2018 now. Um, so three years later, now I'm just getting to the point where things are streamlining and I've got some inventory I can work with and I might be able to start pulling some profit this year after selling it all through this last year. So it, that's my R&D. It took me years to get to the point where I can now say, hey, if I wanted to, I could relax a little bit and still pull some money off of this because of the hard work I've put in over the last couple of years. Okay, So when we look at uh, this research, don't do the research without doing listings, especially when you're new to this. Go ahead and get the listings up there. If you see that only 10% 
are selling. So if we have 2,000 and only see 200 selling, still list it. Just set your expectations that it may not sell all that often. If we see that 50% of them are selling, well, then it might be a decent item to list, and we might see sales. You know, if we list 10 of this kind of item, then it might become an item where we see consistent sales happening with it over time. Not immediately, but over time. Now, the next thing we look at is the sell price of these items. And we can see similar items. So here's one right here. Um, they accepted a best offer. They had it listed for 139 plus 60 bucks shipping. Yikes, that's pretty high. I don't know what they uh, accepted. We can't see that. But uh, we see right down here a similar item that sold for 23 bucks. Very, very similar in nature. Okay. Uh, here's one that sold for 19. So don't look at this and say, I have to be able to sell it for 19 or less or I can't sell it. That's not true because we've got this guy up here listing it for over 100 and he sold. And as you continue down, you're going to see many examples of similar items that are selling for different prices. See, there's another one at 49. Here we've got a great example right there, the exact same product. One sold for $28.90 with free shipping. The other one sold for $57.98 well over, well, I guess not well over, but close to double, right? Close to double the sell price. No, it is double uh, the the sell price. So you can sell even if you're not competing on price, but what does it take to make those sales? So that's where I want to get in and look a little deeper. So let's take, let's go a little deeper down the rabbit hole and take a look at this. Uh, so I'm going to move this around again, and we're going to look over here on this right side we're looking at the seller information section here we've got the seller name we've got their feedback score and you can see that their feedback is 41,000 huge feedback score right we can see that they're a top rated plus seller which is sellers with highest buyer ratings uh, um, returns and money back offered ships in a business day with tracking so you know they've got this little um, top rated plus seller uh, thing there well what does it take to be somebody who has that kind of feedback? We go in here and click see other items and we're now looking at items sold just by that seller. Okay, items for sale from this seller. And we can see that they have 661 active items listed. Now if we scroll down over here on the left hand side, we can do the same thing we did before. We can go over here to show only, sold listings. So now we're looking only at their sold listings. So out of 661 active, they have 541 that have sold within the last three months. Okay, so they're not selling their whole inventory every month, but they're doing darn good in their sales. You know, they're, they're doing 90% sell-through rate in a three-month period compared to the number of items they have listed. So that's pretty good. And then you could go through and you could look at the, the pricing of it. I, you know, I'm not going to worry about trying to, to get an average sell price, but let's just assume there's, they're selling $30 on average and, and making 10% you know, profit. So there's $3, or $3 a piece on profit out of 500 and, and some odd items. That's $1,500, 500 600 bucks a month, and they're probably making a little more than that. So what does it take to make 500, 600 bucks a month? It takes listing 500 to 600 items at least. And that's what I want you to, to equivalent here. That's what I want you to think about with setting your expectations is look at people who are actually making the sales and what are they doing? How many are they listing? To get those sales. Now, this is actually a very high sell-through rate. You'll see other sellers uh, um, that that aren't necessarily seeing that kind of a, a sell-through rate. Let's look at uh, uh, at this one here, um, as seen on TV. Um, seller name. They only have 233 items listed. And if we go look at their sold listings, they're doing a good high sell-through rate too. Now, here's another thing you can you can recognize with these guys. With that high of a, uh, a feedback score, both of these guys have been around the block a few times. They know what they're doing. They they have have streamlined it. They have dialed it in so that they 
they have found the products over years of research and, and listing thousands of items. They've found the items that sell consistently well for them. And so they continue to relist those items that sell well for them. And they're not the same. As you, you can see here, you know, these guys sell different items than, than do the other seller. But they're both selling. That's the bottom line. They're both selling. Then we've got somebody like this over here. Uh, I share this example because uh, I sell cactus myself. And if we go in and look at this uh, individual and look at their feedback, they've only got 118. So they haven't done a huge uh, amount of, uh, of work compared to others. Maybe they haven't been around as long. They only have 139 items listed, but it's very, very niche related. It's something that they are handling themselves, they're growing themselves, and out of 139, um, a little less than half have sold within the last three months. So this is your, your small mom and pop. These guys have it dialed in, they have products that work for them. This is all they want to do, apparently, and, and so that's what they do. Okay, so you decide where you want to to be within this. You decide how much you want to make and and uh, um, what you want to do with your business, basically by the effort you put in. And some of these sellers are doing a whole lot more. Let's go in and look at another one here. See if this is a different one. Yes, this is a, a different seller with a um, four thousand um, one hundred on their feedback and. They have only 454 results. <laughs> it might be a similar. I was hoping to show you one with a, um, bigger discrepancies in numbers, but there we go. So they've only got 400 and some odd listed, and they've sold 955. They've really dialed it in. Sometimes you'll see people with 10,000 items listed only selling 1,000 or 2,000 a, a month. Go and do some of this research yourself and search for different things and just look at the, the sold items, look at the different sellers, look at what the bigger sellers are doing. That should help you set your expectations to know what you need to get to in order to see the kind of results that you want to see. Okay. So if we come back here to our, our slides and uh, um, finish these, uh, basically what I want you to do and what I hope this will show is be realistic as you start this business. Uh, one thing I can promise, it will be hard. You know, it, if you're going to climb that peak, it, it's going to be hard work. It's not going to be easy. There's a lot of work preparing for it uh, and you know, getting there and then getting up to the top of that peak may take weeks or months or years. It may take multiple attempts, right? And uh, once we uh, achieve that, well, then we can look at another goal and uh, achieve more. All right, so I want to go through some, some general steps then. And this is something that I, um, uh, I didn't do a slide for, uh, but if we throw another one in here, what I might uh, uh, call this is... Uh, um, setting work goals. So these are the goals that we set to say, hey, this is what it takes. This is what I have to do to, to achieve this. And what I would say is your, your first goal should be list 50 items. Um, and then let's match this with expectations. What should our expectations be? Expectations are you might not see your first sale. You may not see your first sale within 50 items. Okay, that, that's very realistic. You might, but you might not. So let's set our expectations that, hey, 50 items is just getting started. That's the tip of the iceberg. Um, what do we do after that? Well, the next goal should be double your listings listings. All right, so we're going to go from 50 to 100. 50 to 100 listings. Okay, and then each subsequent goal after that, <clears throat> I would say, con um, my goodness, continue. This is why I create the slides ahead of time. <laughs> 
<laughs> can't type and talk at the same time. Continue to double until you reach the level you want. So if you want that big house and fancy car, and you have 5,000 items listed on eBay and you're not there yet, then put 10,000 items up on eBay. That should be your approach to, to become successful on eBay. 50 items is just getting started. That's just practice. Doubling those from 50 to 100, okay. Now here, you should see your first sale, okay? As you continue doubling, um, here I would say um, you should now start seeing consistent sales, okay? So again, be realistic with it. Um, there is no business in the world that is making high amounts of money and profits with only 50 items presented to customers. And what I mean by that is not, you know, how do I quantify this? Because technically I'm only selling one item here and I'm making good profits. But I have thousands of them available and I've put in tens of thousands of dollars to, of investment to get it there. Um, plus I have put in, you know, this is a little different uh, idea, this, but I have put in uh, a lot of work um, to market and promote this, which equates to the idea that I'm trying to get across here of uh, a high-end retailer with lots of products, okay? Walmart knows they have to present a lot of products because not everything they sell is going to sell right away. Some of them will sit on the shelf for months. But if they put enough products up there, something is going to be moving consistently. And that's the approach you need to take here with eBay. And as you do this, you're going to learn from this not only the basics of online sales, you're going to learn about keywords and their placement and how they work for you. You're going to learn the work ethic. I think that's the biggest thing for you here. What will you learn as you get started? Work ethic. That's the biggest thing. If you can become successful on eBay, then you will gain the skills and the, the work ethic needed to become successful in other areas of, uh, of online business. If you have not learned to make eBay successful, then you haven't learned this. You haven't put in enough work ethic to grow beyond that. Making a website is not easier than eBay. It's harder. It takes a lot more time and effort before you see re a return. And so put in the effort here up front. Do what the big sellers are doing. See the results. Gain the profits. Then take that experience and that knowledge and move on to bigger and better things with your business. Okay? So I hope that helps. I hope that sets the stage, I guess, you know, to really see what it takes. Um, Again, the only thing that I can promise is it will be hard. It is like climbing that peak. A lot of hard work that goes into the preparation for it beforehand, the work to, to get there and to get up to the top, a lot that goes into that. But if you're willing to do it, then we're ready for the next peak and bigger peaks and more and more for our business. So looking at, at the, the idea of things on eBay that where, where others are selling them for lower than you can list them for. With the dropship model, I've told you over and over, you're not competing on price, right? And so if you are looking at those items on eBay, remember first, if you go back and, you know, where I showed you that on, on here, you saw that there are people selling it for all, all across the range. Yeah, there might be more selling them for $50 than there are selling them for 100 or 150 but there are people selling them for 150 so why not you? So when you're looking at that idea of, hell, gosh, there's somebody else out there selling it for $50, and I have to list it for 100 so there's no way I'm going to sell it, so I won't do it. Basically what you're doing is you're this person standing right here looking at somebody that's all the way up here and saying, oh my goodness, he's all the way up there. He's got a lot more experience. He's got people helping him. There's no way I can do that, so I'm not even going to try to climb this mountain. That's what you're saying. Okay? And 
in reality, what you don't know is that person up there started right here. He started at the same place you are and worked until he got to where he could be up there. Same thing with you in, in the business here on eBay. You start where you are. You start with what you can do. You do what you can do, but you put forth the effort. You do the number of listings that are required until you get to the point where you're seeing consistent sales, and then you can dial it in to those things that are selling well for you. So, all right, and with that, I will end and let you get to work, and hopefully this has been helpful and motivational for you to uh, make it happen.